Thanks for listening to the nice podcast. I am available to deliver keynote presentations and workshops for your company or for your conference. Reach out to me, davedelaneyspeaks.com or email me and we can talk. Now on with the show. Hey, it's Jason with the Marketing Podcast Network. You have less than one month left to get special early bird pricing for the Creator Economy Expo 2023. This event, folks, is for content creators and entrepreneurs interested in building and growing their content-first businesses. Do not miss this show. Join over 500 bloggers, podcasters, authors, newsletter writers, speakers, consultants, and freelancers at the learning and networking event for content creators. Plan to attend May 1st through the 3rd in Cleveland, Ohio. Register now to secure early bird pricing before it disappears March 31st. Early bird pricing ends March 31st. As a special offer, you can get $100 off just for listening to MPN shows like this one. Go to cex.events to register. Use the coupon code MPN100. The address, the URL, cex.events. That's the whole thing. Type that into your browser. cex.events, the code you use, MPN100. The Creator Economy Expo, Cleveland, May 1st through the 3rd. See you there. Stocks up. Plummeted. If you had crypto, good chance you lost it all. I was a customer of uh, FTX, so I did lose. And it, like, it all sucks, but suffering is optional. I, I don't, I don't have to suffer from this or worry, right? I, I can just be, you know, if you think about it, most people spend their time in their minds worrying about the, regretting something from the past or worrying about the future. Yes. And not be like, are you in danger right now? Generally, the answer is no. <laughs> nice. 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 Nice with Dave Delaney. Welcome to the Nice Podcast, all about communication, collaboration, and becoming better leaders. I'm your host, Dave Delaney from Futureforth.com, where we help folks retain talent, improve culture and communication so you have happier, more connected teams. Today, I'm speaking with Loïc Lemur. Uh, Loïc is a seven times entrepreneur, investor in a hundred startups, co-founder of PAWA, a conscious uh, conference and community. And he's a sun dancer and trained with, now I want to make sure I got the name right. Yawana, Yanwan, not Yanwan Yawa. Yawanawa. Yawanawa. <laughs> the tribe in the Amazon forest, which is incredible. We're going to, we're going to get to all this. Loïc. It is a pleasure to have you on the show. Thanks for being here. Thank you for having me, Dave. Yeah. So what I, I always like to start these episodes with the question, what is the nicest thing someone has done for you recently? I have a feeling uh, I know what you're going to say. <laughs> I'm sorry, the nicest thing? What did, what did you say? Yes. The, the nicest thing someone has done for you recently. Oh, the uh, uh, son. <laughs> <laughs> I had a my, hunch. Yeah, yeah, my partner, Magdalena, just... Uh, just gave birth to uh, my fourth son and yes. our first, our first uh, kid. So yeah, that was exactly two weeks ago. Congratulations to you. That's Thank amazing. you. That's amazing. That's Falco, right? Yeah, Falco. F-A-L-C-O, like Falcon, just no N. Right, right. That's amazing. So tell me about that. And, and you have like a really cool uh, sub stack that I encourage and I'll include links to everything here so folks can check it out. But you've been also recording some podcasts audio through a sub stack and you shared the magic of life gave me a new son Falco. So tell me a little bit about the, the, the that experience and, and, uh, and having a new, a new baby. Cause your kids, your sons are older, right? How old are your sons now? My sons are 21, 25 and 27. Uh, so yes, it's uh, and I'm 50 years old. So it's it's a it's been a long time. I did I didn't have this experience more than 20 years ago, and also the uh, uh, we had a home birth, which uh, right. is the first time I see that. So that was very special, of course, because uh, it's very different yeah. <laughs> in many ways. Yeah, I can imagine, and uh, and yeah, it's a, it's incredible. I mean, I'm 50 now as well, and my kids are 17 and 18. Uh, or excuse me, 16 and 17. And, uh, yeah, I can't, I couldn't imagine having another kiddo, but I have friends who do. So it's, it's pretty amazing. Yeah. It's, uh, it, it's, it, look, it's very interesting because at 50, I don't have the same, uh, 
relationship to a baby, for example, I, 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 I have to say I, I was extremely, not that I'm not busy now, but I was, I was a kid having a kid. I was, uh, my, my first boy, I was 23. So I was really working on my first startup actually already day and night. And, uh, I didn't, didn't really pay enough attention. I would say now I'm paying much more attention and, uh, the, the work I have done, also like the spiritual or consciousness work I have done, is um, is is makes it also uh, different because I I would say I don't know how weird you want to get with me or not, but I, I would say I feel <laughs> I I feel the, the energy of Falco of my baby in a way that I have I, I was not aware before I was very. Uh, very numbed or not, not sensitive and now I am so so very sensitive so yeah I have I have him in my arms it's very special I when I'm laying down in bed uh, with him like naked or near naked on my chest it's very very special so I would say very very special very very like I feel it's precious you know and also at 50 I, you know I, I I hope a lot but I don't know how much I have I have left you know so um, it's interesting also to think this way. What a gift to be able to have uh, such a life energy in my arms while I'm 50. So, yeah. Do you feel, because you've always been, and I've always, like, I think the first time we met was on a, we were on a panel together at South by Southwest Interactive, and I think it was like 07, uh, Saul Colt and Chris Brogan. Uh, and I'm trying to remember that might've been, yeah. yeah. Um, so you've, you've been this person in, in the sort of tech entrepreneurial space, uh, at least in the social sort of space for as long as I, as I remember, tell me a little bit, let's back, back up a little bit and tell me a little bit about your history, uh, growing up in, in what part of France are you from? I was born in south of France in a city called Perpignan, which is not far from Barcelona in Spain. Okay, nice. And and what what brought you along on this sort of entrepreneurial journey? Because you've this you've always been this prolific entrepreneur and investor. So tell me a little bit about how how you first got into that in, into that sort of in, what what bit that that uh, entrepreneurial bug. Oh, that's that's a very easy one. Both my uh, my parents were entrepreneurs. They were uh, selling sailing boats in South of France, <laughs> oh, <wow. laughs> but I've never. But I've never seen them work for anyone else than them. So I, it was kind of natural for me that I I had no choice than create something. Um, and so I never worked for anyone else than, than me since since I'm 20, yeah. uh, 23, when I graduated from that business school there in France. And uh, yeah, so yeah, I, you know, it's, it, 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 I like the saying of we create our own reality. And my reality was, it's normal that I'm going to start my business. Like there is no other option. Mm. And and once you start thinking this way, well, you start your own business <laughs> because there is no other option. So that's how I did it. I, I did it uh, when I was 23. I was uh, in the third year of my business school and I started a web agency in 1996 when no one, frankly, nobody knew what a website was. And I, I started telling everybody they needed a website. And they're like, what? Like, again, 1996, like, uh, <laughs> nobody had websites. Very few people there at the, at the time. It was very, very early. So, yes, yeah, so I started doing that. And, and uh, I, got, I, I got my first client from an internship. <laughs> I was doing the, my last year internship uh, there. And it was the car manufacturer Peugeot, which you... But your American listeners won't know what it is, but it's a very famous French brand, at least all around Europe and uh, uh, Latin America as well. Anyway, and um, and I, I was there doing an internship, and I told my teacher, "Hey, uh, my I don't know, my teacher, my manager, you, you should really do a website." And we ended up doing the first ever used cars website in France. <laughs> <laughs> And then, then I, someone was happy, then I, I got another one and another one, and, and very fast I ended up with 100 people web agency. <laughs> That's how I started. 100 people? 
Yeah, I get, yeah, it, it was very popular. I was the only one. <laughs> so we were like maybe two or three web agencies in Paris, to be serious. But it went very fast. And then I had a, like luxury brands, I had perfume brands, I had like Unilever, Procter and Gamble. Like we were too busy making websites. And uh, but that's yeah, that we're talking twenty years ago. Uh, tw I'm sorry. Wow, no, we're talking twenty seven years ago. Yeah, and. Uh, so yeah, and then I got acquired. I was 20, uh, 26, well, like basically three years after starting or two years after starting, um, I, I got acquired by BBDO, Omnicom, which is a large advertising group. And uh, I became their BBDO Interactive France. And that's, that's how I started. Then frankly, I got bored because I was in a large, suddenly in a large group and I didn't like it. So, so it was like the fish was in the fish tank. So I, I, I started something else again and something else again and something. Else. <laughs> That's how I started seven, seven startups. But the uh, most important thing I've, I've done in my life was, um, I think, because, you know, it's like at 50, I look at, okay, what well, is like, how do you measure success? Is it money? Is it recognition? Is it uh, helping others? And now I tend to measure as in impact, right? So how did it help the world, others? And like none of these did really do that much. I mean, they, they made money, but, but the, the one that really had an impact, I would say, was a conference called The Web, which I started uh, uh, also kind of randomly in 2003. I was uh, blogging. I learned to blog. And I was also kind of the only one. <laughs> and, uh, and I loved it so much. Um, like, just for your listeners who might be younger than me, uh, the, in 2003, there was no Facebook, no Twitter, no LinkedIn, none of that. Uh, and no iPhone and no Android. <laughs> right. I know it's difficult to imagine, right? And so uh, I started that, um, that conference um, and, uh, and, and we were 200 bloggers from all around the world in Paris. And, uh, in a few years, it became 4,000 people, 80 plus countries, the place where Jack Dorsey launched Square or, uh, the Uber guys, Travis and Garrett, uh, invented Uber because they could not find a taxi at my conference right in front of me. For your fun, they also offered me to invest and I said no. Oh. Um, so, but that, that's the thing I've, you know, since you don't ask, that's the one I'm the most, uh, proud of. It's, it was called the web. It's, uh, it's a tech, it became the largest tech conference in, in Europe. Then I sold it. And then, uh, Paddy with his web summit became way larger and that's okay because I already had sold. So it could, you could get bigger. No problem. So web summit is in Lisbon now, yeah. but anyway, so I did that like 10 years before. <laughs> What's it like being, uh, and I, I mean, I have my own sort of experiences being an early adopter with things. What got you interested in, in the sort of, in the tech world? Like, were you, because you're talking about 96, and so 96 is really the beginning of the internet. Um, were you communicating online before that? Like I, like, I ran a BBS on my Commodore 64 back in like 83, 84. I was a kid, but... That was that was my first taste for like online communication. Uh, before that, it would have been like CB radios and things. But yeah, 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 yeah. I, I had I, I had that too. I, I was on the ninety six hundred modem CompuServe. Yeah. Uh, so right, that puts us back when uh, ninety two, ninety three, right? Yeah. You are eighty eight. That must be even. <laughs> it's yeah. even you might be uh, even even earlier. But yeah, I I, I remember that. Uh, no, I always had that bug. I always felt that the internet would change everything, and it did. Um, it, it's just that I, I thought it would change it much more for the better than it did. <laughs> but uh, but that's yeah. another story. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, we could talk about that too. So tell yeah. me. So so and with that first with that first startup, you know, the the web development agency and, and that really taking off. Um, what what were your experiences in managing people? You said you had like a hundred employees. So how was that something, I mean, at 23, I mean, God, I was, I had, 
my brain, well, my our brains are literally not developed until you're 24. So, so tell me about that experience managing people. How how was that for you? Was it good? Was it hard? Was it- I I didn't like it that much. I honestly didn't like it. Like if I were to to do well, I'm kind of doing a business now, <laughs> yeah. but uh, yeah, I would rather have a someone like a CEO or, or even a CEO, not be the CEO myself. Like, uh, I would, I would prefer that. I, I didn't like it, like it that much. And, and then, you know, as an entrepreneur, I, I went through, yeah, five, six, seven startups. I, and I, so I also had to fire people, which is terrible, right? Like you have to do that. Uh, I, yeah, I didn't, I didn't like it. It, it creates, uh, it's, it's difficult, honestly. It's, it's very difficult. It's rewarding. But it's difficult uh, because you have to. I don't know. Like I, I think I, w- I, I am doing it, doing it completely differently now. But the uh, uh, let's see all the motivational stuff, right? Like uh, I don't know. It, it might be part my age, part my uh, all the time I spent doing consciousness work that I can't really lie anymore. And I, I, when I say lies, I'm, I'm saying it in a good way, like making reality better than it is. That's what I mean. I I would have never gone anywhere in business if I was lying all the time. But what I mean is a little controversial. I'm sorry, especially if you talk to marketing people in this audience. Uh, yeah. You know, I, I actually, I remember Seth Godin, right, who yeah. wrote this book like a long time ago, All Marketers Are Liars. Right. And I, I, you could say that of business people, all, all business people are liars in a way or entrepreneurs because you tend to make reality better than it is, right? It's like, um, uh, how many times did I promise stock options as a CEO, as a founder, shares, uh, you know, based on my dreams? So I wasn't really a liar, but it didn't always turn out to be what it, what I thought it would, right? Sure. And then you, 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 you have some employees who get angry or get, um, you know, like I really remember perfectly well having one day shut down a business. You have to do that as an entrepreneur. As an entrepreneur, like everything I did didn't work. A lot of things I did worked. A lot didn't. And uh, I got like some really, really angry employees. I remember telling me, uh, well, but you're firing me. I was like, well, I'm shutting down the business. <laughs> so yeah, right. yes, you know, and, uh, and, and it, it, all these tensions are difficult. It's, uh, it's because stress is not good for us, whether you're on the side of a manager or the employee. So it's, it's difficult to, I don't know. I, I know if I'm clear, I'm just saying, what I'm saying is that uh, there are lots of, if it's not lies, over promising in business, let's call it over promise, over, over promising things. Yeah, yeah. And you kind of get in that game, right? The advertising promises you something, generally a product better than it is. How many times have you bought something and then been disappointed mm-hmm. by what you bought, right? And I, I don't, I can't really do that anymore. I, I don't want that in my life much. And it makes a lot of sense. I mean, uh, I read a great Sam Harris uh, book about lying that was really fascinating kind of take. I mean, his view is never to lie. Yeah. Like just never lie. Uh, and, and, you know, there, there's ways that you can, you can handle things tactfully, but at the same time, you know, never lying, I think is, uh, yeah. I mean, it's a good way to be. It's a good approach to, to bi- not just business, but to life. Yeah, it's, uh, I don't know, either edging on that, that work that I've done, but uh, I, 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 I don't. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. I, it, might, it might make me more cautious, over-cautious, right? Like, yeah. uh, uh, because that's the business game is to oversell. As a sales guy, as an entrepreneur, as a startup guy, as uh, someone raising funding, you have to oversell. You have to, like we call it, communicate the vision, yeah. right? But, but like what's the limit between, that's a, I think I've always been honest or, or I wouldn't be here, you know, I would have like 
people who are not honest lose most of their supporter or friends. Mm -hmm. So so it's not that I you know I look at my past as as I have not, but I, I would I would be more in an extreme honesty right now. You know, it's like uh, um, it, it's I, I don't know. Ten years ago, if you told me, okay, if I told you, which I did many times, mm -hmm. I'm raising eight million dollars on let's say 15 million valuation, which I have done. Mm -hmm. Here is why, you know, here is here you have the business numbers and everything, and Today, I would look at you and say, well, I absolutely know that this business plan I'm showing to you, like I have actually no clue. <laughs> <laughs> you, you see, like, that's most business plans. Mm -hmm. and, and that's the thing is like VCs know that, investors know that, and they still invest, but they know that. Yeah. But, so it's a game. Well, but the entrepreneur knows that he doesn't know shit about his business plan, like most of the time, most of the time. They have no idea, right? So it's more of a trend. Mm -hmm. So look at crypto, right? Everybody was raising. And now there is no trend on crypto anymore. Very little. Like, go, go, good luck raising any funding these days. Really yeah. hard. Yeah. Well, that's good reason with there. I, I, the, the whole term Web3 three, three irks me. <laughs> but, but to your point, I mean, I think... I think being, I think approaching business in an honest way is, is, is definitely a nice thing to do. And it's a good way. And it does, to your point, it comes back. I mean, you know, we haven't had too many uh, interactions besides kind of at South by over the years. And, and uh, you know, obviously online, I've, I, uh, but I've always, I've always held you in a nice regard. I've always thought fondly. Of you. <laughs> Thank so, you. So there you Likewise. Go. Yeah, yeah. Um, even in, in the days of seismic and I've got to bring up seismic because so for those listening, Louis created, well, I, you could describe it better, but seismic was seismic. Seismic was a video platform first and then a, uh, like a, a social media dashboard. Is that correct? Or do I, am I mixing it up? What, it, it was a social, it, it was an attempt at doing a video social network. Yes. Right. And, and, and that was before. Facebook, mm -hmm. uh, before iPhone, mm -hmm. and before uh, before Android. So we were doing it on the we had, we had to use a flash player or something recorder yes. on the browser. So I, I did basically I did everything wrong in one way, which is ten years too early, yeah. and and that's that's a mistake an entrepreneur does. Too early is no good. You have to be at the right timing. Too late is bad, right? Like. Yeah. Like, well, you, you and I were just laughing about this, like, good luck trying to launch a, a, a crypto product right now. Like, maybe in six months or a year, it will have come back. But right now, uh, near impossible to raise funding. So it's too late. But six months ago or 12 months ago, uh, my son actually j just raised millions on a, a crypto project oh, right wow. it, it, and it closed yeah it closed after the, it closed before everything crashed so good timing with seismic i was uh, literally 10 years too early uh you could say it was a version of uh, of the like the instagram stories maybe video maybe a little tiktok some people post that which makes me happy of course that i, I had done TikTok 15 years before TikTok, but but uh, too early really made it very small. But those who were in it still talk to me about it. Um, yeah, I loved it. I mean, I was a user of Seismic and and I enjoyed using it and meeting. I remember uh, uh, chatting a lot with uh, Laura with Pistachio. <laughs> like we were both pretty uh, heavy users of Seismic back in the day, and, and it was like a bar, right? Yeah. Yeah, it was. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it was like a literally like a so. I mean, it was a social network before the term really was a thing, right? So, you know, and I think there were other like I remember there was a great audio type of service called uh, Utters or or Utterly back then, and and I always found. See, it's funny, Louis, because to me, I've always, for years, I thought of myself as a an early adopter in technology and a technologist and I worked for hardware companies and software companies and blah, blah, blah. But what I realized was that I'm only really interested in using these mediums, these platforms, these services in order to connect with other humans, with other people. And for me, it's really about communication and podcasting and 
seismic back in the day and social networks and all this stuff has always been about connecting with other other people is that what kind of got you excited about about the web always yeah yeah that's how we know each other always yeah i i, I don't know about this bug yeah it's uh i'm i'm, I'm doing another conference now so I, I, I love connecting <laughs> so yeah but the conference is coming from I'm sorry, the conference is coming from a community that I've built for a year and a half online called Power, uh, which which is about, it's, it's not that big, it's about 400 people, but those 400 people are coming from like 30 countries, and, uh, and, and I built the conference based on the community, but I did the community first, so yes, I have that bug. Um, and, and we had, uh, we did the first event in Paris with about, uh, 30, actually 36 countries flew in first edition. So I love that, you know, it's, uh, it's not new. I was doing that for tech conferences. Now, now I'm doing this on a consciousness event. Yeah. And tell us a little bit about Pawa. What's, what's the story behind it? And, and, uh, and let's talk a little bit about this. Yeah. Pawa. So it's P-A-U-A. Uh, life dot life l i f e and uh, if anyone wants to check it out and uh, the power it's uh, it's very simple I did a lot of consciousness work so what does this mean well when I was forty I started uh, uh, I divorced so that that got everything started my my life was shaken and uh, uh, and I I kind of was looking for something else than you know like this. Uh, successful, you know, trying to make a, another startup, right? And more recognition, like more like, so I was really going after either success with, um, in the business world, which I, which I reached, right? Somehow, of course, I'm no, you know, no billionaire, but like, if, if you look at biz, building, I, I built businesses. So that was success. Then I had recognition. I, you know, I was like 12 years ago in Davos, well, the speaker at the World Economic Forum and went to TED for 10 years, all, all that stuff. Like, I, as you said, we actually met talking uh, on stage, both together at South by Southwest. So I was doing like a, a lot of events talking. And, and so I had that recognition as well. And, and then I had, you know, made reasonable amount of money. Still, I was not happy, <laughs> which, of course, we can get into the what's happiness or not. But content marketing, SEO, competitive research, advertising. Sounds like a large scope of work you need to get done. How about full digital marketing control over your business? SEMrush can be your right hand for that. It has over 50 tools and reports to cover any online marketing activities. No more switching from one service to another. Get a 14-day free trial and watch your business grow. Go to bit.ly slash simrushmpn. That's B-I-T dot L-Y bit.ly slash S-E-M-Rushmpn. But I, I needed something else than that. And so I started meditating and I, I really started looking, basically, which some people might call the Middle Age crisis. Um, I, I was talking recently to someone who told me the Middle Age crisis is a thing because it's uh, it's a, a, it's actually f a physical modification of of the way the masculine brain works, where especially the modification in hormonal modification, you know, less testosterone probably. But then I'm not an expert. But it's basically a physical modification, and once that physical modification starts, then uh, was well, like this crisis happens. And it definitely did happen to me. So I started meditating. I went to 10 day silent retreats. Then I started, I did years of therapy, like five, six years, uh, like, like in, not intense, but like once a week. So pretty intense. <laughs> then I did, uh, yeah, at the same time, I looked at like the burning man, right? I did like, after 12 years in a row in Davos, I did eight years in a row at burning man. <laughs> so, <laughs> and, uh, and, and and that like still wasn't doing it, and then finally I did uh, an ayahuasca ceremony in uh, in Brazil where it's fully legal in the, the jungle in the Amazon forest, and I loved it so much I started walking a lot 
uh, working as in spending time with indigenous. So I went to their villages, like really deep, it takes three days to go to their village in the Amazon forest. And they started learning with them a lot and learning about plants, like trying maybe 30 or 40 plants and, and animal substances. I did very intense work, like um, three months completely isolated in the jungle, uh, in a hut, not even in a village. They were, they were just bringing me food. I would see only one person per day bringing me food, basically. So very, very intense work. And then I realized, you know, maybe the most important thing is to be conscious. Be conscious about everything that I'm doing. Like, uh, what, what is it? How is it helping anything? Uh, my family, my friends, the world, you know? Even in a, it doesn't have to be ambitious. I don't have to save the Amazon forest. I, w I wish I could with my two hands. But, uh, you know, it starts with not damaging around you with what you eat, not damaging your own body, you know, like all the crap we can put in our body. Or I did before. I, I stopped drinking two years ago entirely. Ah, I'm not, not saying, oh, congratulations. Yeah, you I'm not saying anyone should, right? But how do you feel? I feel great. I can sleep again. Um, I, uh, yeah, no, I, I feel great. I actually started meditating as well a couple of years ago and, and have a daily practice now and did my first half day, half day retreat, silent retreat. Uh, uh, and I'm, I'm keen to do m much more of that. Um, so following your journey along your sub stack and, and the stories that you're sharing about this, this journey is really inspiring. Uh, I'm not sure if my wife will let me leave to the Amazon quite yet. <laughs> <laughs> but how many kids do you have? I have two. Oh yeah. So uh, how old? 16 and 17 years old. Yeah. 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 So you, you're still busy. My, 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 my new, my partner <laughs> and my new family, I would say with my son. Yeah. Cannot uh, won't won't let me go either. <laughs> but I might I might make it compulsory. To, to be honest, I I don't think I can not go back now that I have seen it. Yeah. But I, I won't do three months because three months is crazy. I was uh, offline, no phone, no Mac, nothing. Like yeah. back to back to pre-internet. It's so amazing that that, uh, that I have uh, got to taste this in 2022. And now it's uh, something I, I remember so much that I, I want to get back to it. Yeah. Tell, so, what are some takeaways that you that you learned during this during the retreat during you know your time there, meeting indigenous people? Well, the main takeaway is that there is a lot of ancient technologies which exist that uh, that I had no idea about and uh, and many people did but not so many to be honest like people think like for example the way they they use the plants is drugs uh, and and uh, again it's fully legal in Brazil it's being decriminalized in uh, most cities in the US San Francisco just did um, and but yet it's still called drugs ayahuasca right and and their kids just to give you an idea kids take it as of age five five. Right, and they drink ayahuasca uh, in the tribe I work with uh, once to twice a week. Every every basically every uh, uh, twice a week. It's it's very connect. That's the way they connect with the divine, as they say. And uh, if you take it, it's it's it, it feels like uh, doesn't. I mean, like any definition of a drug, as in one, it's entertaining. Well, it's not. Two, it's addictive. Well, it's not. Because good luck, like you can't, you know, like try to force yourself to drink that. You're going to purge, vomit. It's really hard to take. And it's not addictive. And it's kind of more the contrary. Like most people I know took it once or twice. Or maybe they do some work, they do a week or 10 days there, and then never again in their whole life. <laughs> right. So it's really like uh, not, honestly. It doesn't have a the characteristics of, of a drug at all. And uh, um, and, and so I, I've seen it as a technology, like I have my iPhone and I go there to discover what my brain can do that I didn't know was able to do. So, so, so I discovered that world, 
But then I, I quickly, I will say quickly, I came back to Earth, right? Like, because you're, I was in Avatar there. Mm -hmm. So it's great. But when I go back to the US or Europe, well, there are no plans. Uh, and I also don't want to depend on tech substances to feel good. So I, did, okay, I thought, okay, well, what, what can I do? And you meditate. So now I meditate every day. Well, it's been a few years now. But I, I would say the meditation has changed like, completely since I've done that work. Because I, I, I think what it does, and I, I, I think many people have, have done some research on it, even though it's new, because as you know, even research, scientific research was forbidden, and it still is in most countries. Um, but it, it really reconnects parts of your brain that are either disconnected or that are uh, like dark, that you don't use, basically. And now that I meditate, after all that work of reconnecting my brain to, to make it simple, uh, well, it's amazing. It's, it's really amazing. I feel I see the world totally differently, calmer, uh, more aware of everything, which is not only good news. Like, for example, if I take a plane, the, the lights are very, very bright, you know. To me, the, the, the sounds tend to be a little aggressive. So I, I really change my way of life uh, I don't live in a city anymore, uh, but like that's the gift of COVID. We can do so much now without living in a city. And, and does it help to put things in perspective too? Because that's one thing I found is kind of rethinking things and also like slowing down in a moment long enough to just realize, and it can be as simple as, you know, going on Twitter and being pissed off at something you see and taking a second to be, you know, this is something I've been telling a lot of a lot of people about is the, the importance of of understanding that well, social networks, especially, you know, it's there. It's now in their best interest to to get us to click on links and engage. And and, and in order to engage you, you got to be upset. And so we see things. The algorithms feed us things to get us upset. And what I find so often now is I see something that irks me or just upsets me for a second and I'm like no nope, no nope. <laughs> it's not gonna happen it's not gonna upset me forget it and and try to move on to to something more positive is that have you had like similar sort of experiences or how do you handle that well I I'd say it's like of a permanent I uh my day now awake day turned into a permanently awake state, you know, probably, 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 sorry, meditative, awake as in uh, awaken, right? So, for example, if someone tells me something that is unpleasant, I, uh, I, I see it and I don't react um, or I try not to. Because that's, that's the training of meditation, as you know, is equanimity, as they say, right? It's, uh, okay, I'm, I'm I'm pissed off right now. <laughs> yeah. Let's let's not react, right? Let's let's just you know like why, even my partner. How why is she telling me this way or talking to me this way, and how can I not react to that? And 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 generally you realize that it it's like in meditation. You know when you meditate and suddenly you need to go to the bathroom. Right, that happened to you. Or you really want to stand up. You're like, okay, like, screw that. I don't want to believe it. And you don't. Mm -hmm. You train your mind to just go through that. Generally, it's okay. Yeah, it turns out we can't we can hold pretty long without going to the bathroom if we train our mind a bit. <laughs> but it's the same here. It's like, okay, I'm getting upset or this person is upsetting me or this situation is upsetting me. But really, if you think about it, it's generally not that bad. It's it's not an immediate danger, right? Yeah. Like like there's a friend that posted on Twitter uh, recently. He said, uh, "Hey, uh, like Twitter is so important to me. I I don't know what I would do without it." You know, like something like this. And I said, "Well, no, not not really, because if you were on a deathbed right now, you would not find Twitter very important." Um, and, and that, I, I would say back to the, what I learned in the jungle, is, is this permanent, like, per, permanent thinking that there is another space, right? It's like there is something else, more important. The space where we go every night when we sleep, the space where we're from when, before we were born, 
and uh, now I'm taking risk. I'm talking about reincarnation and all that stuff, right? But well, I'll do it. The, the space where we go when we die. And uh, for me, when I go to sleep, and yes, I also sleep much better now uh, with uh, without alcohol. Way, way better. I dream. Another gift of the jungle was lucid dreaming. So I have this other life uh, during my my nights almost. Every night, I have I have that, and uh, and it, it's fascinating. But so there is there is something else, right? Like for example, I, I feel like I'm getting a lot of information through my dreams. I give you an example. Uh, we're talking about worrying and being upset. Uh, I didn't have exactly that, but I, I was dreaming that I was uh, worrying, not upset, but I was worrying. And, and I was worrying, and I had this voice tell me in the dream, right? So it's a dream. It's like, wh why do you worry about this? Oh, no, are you worrying now? And I was like, no, but I'm dreaming. It's normal that I don't worry. And like, well, if you... See, I have this kind of weird dialogue, like dialogue sometimes with creatures in my dreams. I, I, I came back very much to a kid stage, uh, which is so fun. I discover, yeah, yeah. And, and, and the voice was like, hey... Uh, why do you worry during when you're awake if you cannot worry when you sleep and dream? Mm -hmm. and like, that's a good question. And that stayed in my mind. I said, this is so right. Like, why do you, like, worrying is optional. Yeah. I, you know, it can, it can be shit like right now, right? The stocks are plummeted. If you had crypto, good chance you lost it all. I was a customer of uh, FTX, so I did lose. Uh, and it, like, it all sucks, but. Suffering is optional. I, I, don't, I don't have to suffer from this or worry, right? I, I can just be, you know, if you think about it, most people spend their time in their minds worrying about the, regretting something from the past mm -hmm. or worrying about the future. Yes. And, and not being like, are you in danger right now? Generally, the answer is no. <laughs> Yeah, no, that, that's great. Actually, I, I was, uh, yeah, I was seeing a therapist last year and that's something we hit on is exactly to your point where if you focus too much on the past, that leads, that can lead to depression. And if you focus too much on the future, that can lead to anxiety. And so by focusing on the present, it's not to say you don't think about the future. Cause I mean, if you're running a business or a conference or you family, I mean, you're going to think about the future and you're also going to reflect on the past and, and, but the, the point is not to dwell on it too much. And the fact that you can't change the past and you can't change the future. All you can change is like right now. Yep. That's the only thing you can do. Yeah. So am I in danger right now? Not, not really. My, my nose is a little clogged, which I, I regret because <laughs> it probably, you can probably hear that on the podcast, but it's okay. So, so it's not my normal, uh, voice, but uh, what, I, I yeah. What are your thoughts on the level of this? Is something I think about a lot, where as it pertains to to this, where of of privilege, of the fact that like we're financially secure enough, so that like I, I often wonder whether somebody who is not financially well off, or or even in good sh like perhaps they're struggling financially how they can embrace mindfulness and meditation. I mean, how they can even quiet their minds long enough when the stresses are really real. I, I don't, I, I don't think that's uh, Dave with all respect. I don't think that's related. Mm -hmm. um, I, 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 I don't think I, I might look like a sound like a, like an asshole saying that, but I, let, let me, let me elaborate. Um, <laughs> 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 uh, if you look at most people who go to monasteries or do a lot of spiritual work, they actually don't have money. So it's kind of normal for them to, like even the monks don't have homes where, where you know, they, they, they have, I don't know how you say it in English, but you, they give up on everything. Yeah. Owning, how do you, is there a word for that in English? Like this uh, phenomenon of Just not everything. owning, yeah. not owning anything. Well, yeah, like okay. materialism, I guess, being non-materialistic, maybe. Yeah, it doesn't matter. There's yeah, a yeah. term in French which is which is definitely to describe that. Like, if you want to become a monk tomorrow, you give up all your wealth. Like, you close your bank account. 
yeah. that you you live live on uh, charity basically. Yeah, my father was a Catholic priest before yeah. I was around, um, and he was a fully ordained priest. And yeah, in order to enter the priesthood, he had to give up everything. And but but that's a that's a point in your life that if you reach that point, you like if you have a family and a business and things like that, I mean, you could in theory just leave and become a monk, but, or a priest or whatever, but chance, you know, most people still have to, you know, keep existing. I don't know. No, 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 for sure. What I mean is it, it's not, you can be very poor and very, uh, doing a lot of consciousness work or a lot of spiritual work. Right, there is a lot of people. If you go to Cusco in Peru, if you go to Costa Rica, Bali, there is a lot of people who have no money there, uh, and they they live a very non stressful life. And so, I, I guess the stress you're describing is more coming from someone who has kind of a reasonable way of life and loses everything. Like that that the difference becomes very very important. But I, I would I would argue that. Uh, most many people who have a lot are way more stressed. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. It's interesting too, because I think, you know, I was talking to someone a while back about success and happiness and, and, you know, my business isn't where I want it to be. But at the same time, I've got like, I have a wonderful wife who's my best friend. I've got two awesome kids and a nice home. And like, we have uh, a cute dog. <laughs> we, we have, we ha like, I've reached these successes in my life that money can't buy. I mean, money can buy a house and a dog, but, but not a, a significant other and not great ch kids necessarily. And I think, you know, I've, I've reached these levels of success. And, and when I reflect on that, uh, yeah, it makes me makes me pretty happy about how life life is and how it can be. So, yeah, yeah. yeah. Tell me about when is Pawa? When is the next <laughs> conference? Yeah, so I never answered never answer your question basically, but so Pawa is about that. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so it's it's about like both business people who who think there is more than just making money and profit to life, and everybody say, oh yeah, yeah, there is, but. You don't really like, like basically care, care about consciousness. Want to learn something else, yeah. and uh, and then uh, it's also for conscious slash spiritual people who want to you know be surrounded by people who do something. So like business, you know, it's like the intersection with between business and consciousness, mm -hmm. and business and spirituality. And uh, the next one is uh, very likely, we have not defined it yet, but in uh, April or May in Miami. The last one was in Paris, and there will be another one in Paris in uh, October, like last year. Uh, and so, yeah, so we're working on Miami now, but uh, but it's, you know, it's like I, I want to be cautious. Uh, the economy is pretty hard these days, so... Uh, I, 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 I need to we need to make it very simple so so that it doesn't uh, you know it doesn't end up being a, a loss so yeah so yeah. Uh, so I'm, I'm still looking at it right now yeah yeah well keep me posted I, I would love to and I'll, I'll be sure to share uh, links and information about it to our listeners okay I want to move on to the lightning round to be respectful of your time here what is a nice book that you recommend uh, listeners check out Gosh, um, lights <laughs> so many right now yeah. that uh, let me see. Uh, what is this? I am I'm re I'm reading one right now that I don't want to recommend. So I have to. Well, you have to cut that because now I'm getting very, uh, no, very, okay. very uh, long. No, you're okay. No, but I I like biocentrism mm. recently. But if your answer is what what books you recommend, I'm reading Morphic Resonance right now, which I don't recommend because it's very uh, very complicated. I um, I like I love the mysticism of sound and music, which is about Sufism, uh, but it's not about Sufism. It's about sound and music. <laughs> okay. But how basically how you how you get into spiritual uh, places just with sound and music? Oh, very very. Interesting, yeah. Highly, highly recommend uh, recommend that. And if you want to learn about the story of uh, 
humans and spirituality and religions there is this book called not in his image mm. um which which i found great as well it's a it's a story of spirituality across religions and i learned a lot reading it really like it okay cool thanks and uh so a couple more questions the first is uh how is Luik nice to himself? Meditating. <laughs> <laughs> nice. And if you had a billboard, what would it say? Uh, it would say fo focus. 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 Like, like, like get back. Well, basically, no. Fo focus on what matters. Yes. Like, yeah, I missed a few words. Focus on what matters. I love it. Luik, this has been so great. How can people get a hold of you and, and connect? Oh, very simple. So I have this newsletter, which I forgot to mention. So it's loic.substack.com, L-O-I-C.substack.com. And I, I write twice a week, so I'm pretty prolific. And uh, um, yeah, if people want to check it out, I also have a podcast there uh, that I, I record myself. I tell stories from the jungle generally or from uh, things I lived. It's really great. I, I highly recommend everybody check it out. And congrats again on Falco. That's, uh, that's so exciting. Thank you, Dave. I, uh, I, I, yeah, I'm having a lot of fun with uh, Falco and that uh, it feels like a second life, but uh, a second real life. <laughs> yeah. Well, thank you, sir. Thank you. Hey, thanks so much for listening to the show today. Would you do me a favor? Leave a review. The reviews help others discover the show and they mean a lot to me. So I would appreciate that. Did you know I am often hired as a keynote speaker for company retreats or for conferences? To find out more about that, you can visit davedelaneyspeaks.com. Music by Alistair Crystal at alistaircrystal.ca. We'll see you next time. And be nice. I know you're listening to this show along the Marketing Podcast Network, but did you know there are other great shows on MPN to help your business? Matt Bailey hosts a fantastic podcast called The Endless Coffee Cup. Matt, tell these fine folks what they'll get when they listen. At Endless Coffee Cup, we go beyond the headlines with a regular discussion of marketing news, media, and culture about our complex digital lifestyle. Of course, with my emphasis on education, I have great guests from all over the world that share their stories, giving listeners unique insights into their experiences and expertise. Sounds super useful. Where can people subscribe? They can go to my website at sitelogic.com or find the show at marketingpodcast.net. Or hey, we're everywhere, wherever you get your podcast. You heard him. Go subscribe.